Uh, welcome, Samyak, to the Tech Catch-Up Show, a Nerd for Tech Originals, and I hope you enjoy the conversation that we are going to have today, and it may bring some value to the table and for our audiences as well. So, first of all, let me introduce Samyak Jain. He is CEO as well as the founder of MyWays.in, which is an AI-empowered growth platform, and we will we'll get to know more about it throughout this conversation. As a as a conversation proceeds, we would be diving deep into what it does, what what what's the problem that my ways is solving, what's the vision of Samyak behind it. So we will be dealing with all those stuff during this conversation. Uh, thanks a lot, Samyak, for joining in, and thanks a lot for uh, taking out time from your schedule and coming to the show. So, uh, thank some... you. Thanks a lot, Kushagar. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, uh, Samyak, before starting your journey as an entrepreneur, or from where did you get this idea of my ways or anything on that line? I would like to break the conversation on the note that what was your background like? How was your childhood? How was the effect of uh, par- of your parents and your surroundings over you? Like what were some of those values that were inculcated in you during those years, which knowingly or unknowingly built you as a person who loves solving problem and eventually you came to that path of entrepreneurship. So please go ahead. Sure, sure. I think uh, the uh, a very unique question, uh, right? So perhaps, uh, uh, so I come from... Uh, city called Meerut, right? Yeah. It's uh, around 80 kilometers from Delhi. Okay. And I've had my schooling there. Uh, it's famous for some of the reasons, good and bad, both. Yeah. So uh, my childhood has been uh, like, so so. It, uh, my, my father is a businessman, right? So he runs a dairy farm. And uh, for me, uh, my parents have given good importance to my education, mm. right? So that is one thing. And the second thing is that I myself, I had been a topper throughout my school life mm. till class 10th. And after that, I decided to perhaps uh, take a different route. But before that, I was one of those geeks, studious people. But mm. at the same time, I was an all-rounder, right? Mm. So in sports, I was I used to play uh, basketball, cricket. I was a huge, mm. uh, like I used to spend three, four hours a day during my childhood in cricket. And uh, I was very, like, I used to talk to a lot of people, even then, right? So, uh, I, I, I guess, curious by nature in, in mm. terms of exploring different things, right? And uh, adventurous in nature, that was how, uh, through sports and uh, through different uh, kind of things that I was involved in, uh, that was how, like, I think, uh, what was built. Now, the important uh, when you actually connect the dots, when you mm-hmm. see where am I today and how I landed up here. So the first, the very first dot that I can connect uh, specifically dates back to while I was uh, in class 10th, right? That is when I decided that, hey, I'm going to go for uh, JE preparation because that was what the supposed to be toppers are supposed to do, mm. right? I didn't really know what is ID. I didn't really know what exactly is engineering. To be honest, I wanted to be an architect back then. So uh, I wanted to be an architect and uh, I somehow landed up into JE coaching. And while I was into it, I was performing decently well there. And finally, while like when I was about to fill the forms for uh, exams, so I asked my teacher that, hey, I want to be an architect. He told me that, hey, you are in the wrong line. Here, you can be an engineer. If you fill this JE mains form, you can be an engineer. For that, there is a different exam, but you can fill that. But you have not really prepared for it. So uh, just as a matter of chance, you can fill it and try your luck. So uh, I decided not to fill the form of architect, but uh, JE mains I gave and then the advanced. So Mm. luckily, I got selected for multiple IITs and the two options that I was able to jot, like narrow down my options were one was civil in IIT Roorkee mm-hmm. and biotech in IIT Delhi. Okay. And uh, Delhi and Roorkee are fairly approximately the same distance from my place. Okay. Uh, now in Roorkee, I was getting civil engineering and that was the yeah. fun part. So uh, in our 
locality right it roorkee is more famous than it delhi mm. and that too civil engineering mm. and for a person who didn't really know anything back then i thought what is closest to civil uh, to architect being an architect i guess yeah. it is civil engineering exactly that was the thought process now i realize how faulty it was uh but i decided ki yaar theek hai i should go for civil engineering because that was on my plan b hmm right but then somehow i don't know what but uh, there there were certain reasons that i was very sure that i am not going for civil right because uh civil mein i might go for ias preparation hmm. i might uh, ultimately what are the career options later on i might become a civil engineer and i didn't really want to be that Hmm. I don't want to be in that bureaucratic system. Is what was quite there in it in the nature that I don't want to be in that ladder bureaucratic okay. system. And then I had a conversation with my elder brother. He is also like a robotics engineer now, and uh, he mentioned that hey, you are going to if you're going, w- what do you want to do after your college? Hmm. So I told him that perhaps. So he said, do you want to do a job? That was a ba- basic question or further studies. Hmm. So I said I am not definitely not going to do a job. Hmm. This was class twelfth. I said I am not going to do a job, and he said, "Acha, fir to you can go for masters perhaps, but civil engineering me masters options are not many, hmm. and uh, even in biotech masters options are there abroad. So that hmm. is good. Or otherwise you can go for an MBA." Hmm. Now I told him, "Thik hai. Is tarike se narrow down kya? I want to go for an. I don't want to go for a job. I might want to start my own venture." Hmm. so this was the point when i mentioned this he said i will give you good options and that is what i think you should opt for so i decided to be in it delhi and that was the turning point for me that that specific moment was the turning point because it delhi had given me good options to explore entrepreneurship i didn't know uh, what is entrepreneurship hmm. uh, in it delhi i got to know there's a world called entrepreneurship i used to call it business and i wanted to be a business man and all of that day one i remember when uh, there were orientation sessions going on i there were multiple communities student clubs mm. uh, which were showing their presentations and i was attracted specifically towards the one which was in education mm. right so when you are exposed to lot of stuff then you dis- you you see that hey there's lot of things which are there uh, out there in the world so i was attracted towards education on day one and i explored that pretty well in multiple ways in my first year so that was how my interest in education began began and then finally there were multiple incidents i consider my summer vacations to be really important in okay. uh, deciding what i am going to do in my future so from first year onwards i guess uh, i was very particular about what i am going to be after i graduate so right. those summer vacations and winter vacations i was very particular about using that time to take certain important decisions about my life mm-hmm. <laughs> right so particularly in, in terms of exploring different fields so i had done everything pretty much everything in my first year i had done it and uh, entrepreneurship was definitely on my list uh, first in my bucket list so uh, started exploring and and then uh, i guess towards the second year i decided i went for a research internship because that was second in my list uh, i went to china for some dna based research internship okay. because i wanted to explore that area so yeah. that is where i finally after after that i decided that no i think i should give my time to my good amount of my third year to exploring startups and uh, i took up a problem statement and by the end of my third year while i was about to sit for internships uh a senior mentioned that if you cannot give two months to what you want to do in your life forget giving next 10 15 years mm-hmm. he was talking about that two months of uh, third year internship and that is where i decided that no i am not going to go for any internship i rather hired uh, three four interns who mm-hmm. can help me brainstorming on the idea and uh, doing certain mvp and that is where uh, uh, i got the confidence not to sit for the placements mm-hmm. and finally i did not sit for the placements and finally got some funds from iit the day i graduated uh, from mm-hmm. iit they gave me certain funds to de- develop a product right mm-hmm. before that i had done enough work in the pilot so i developed the product and uh, in covid we launched so 13th of march was when 
all of the colleges so our work is mainly into with with college students hmm. so uh, the day we uh, so we were about to launch in march and that was the month when covid lockdown and all was announced Hmm. So that was a different journey, but yeah, before launch, this has pretty much been the journey. Great. Yes. So, since you are trying to solve a problem in education sector of our country, I wish to know what are the problems that you feel our education system actually has. And when I say this, I am not only trying to cover the curriculum part or the way it is taught in the way things are taught in our country i also want to put the point uh, where the process that is being carried out for so long how the process is being a monotonous one when it comes to learning even when the government tries to implement certain policies certain amendments in the education system how good of an impact does those policies amendments made to the education system at a very basic level so what are your perspectives over this right so uh, I, i think i'm a uh, maybe a devotee of good education system right so i mm. i really i am very passionate about how education can be improved so i'll tell you i, I got your question i guess Yeah. So, so I'm just coming to that. So, basically, uh, in my opinion, what is what is like? I'll ask a very basic question. So, what is education? Right. Education is not something that you get in the school. Hmm. Right. Currently, the system is education. Actually, the what is the core meaning of education? The fundamental meaning of education. It starts when you get out of school. That hmm. is the current system. Hmm. Right. Which means. uh education about life mm. right education about what is good what is bad and not rote learning is not education right so and specifically i think uh, as i was sharing my journey i had been a good uh, victim of this okay. of l- just just learning through the books and all mm. of that right so that is the fundamental problem in my opinion in the current system uh and the specifically education is something so i i believe that whatever you are learning if you are able to implement that in real life hmm. that is what education uh, w- this is what education you need if you are learning anything which you are not able to use in your real life that education has no meaning right so i believe that education whatever is being imparted into the students primary school secondary school whatever has to do with how they are implementing it in the real life it has different implications at different ages so mm. very evident is in college right so mm. whatever you are learning in college in your lectures if you if you have practical experience of implementing that that is preferred in the industry and similarly it goes with class 10th 8th 6th 4th and that is what i believe uh, this new policy uh, nep of mm. government is trying to do and that is where it is also attracting eyes from left right and center right it is it is getting good views now it depends on how well it is executed uh, so i think now uh, that was your specific question if i if i get that right yeah also uh, like talking yes, about yes. the way as to it has the real the real experience and implementation of what your theoretical learning of theoretical learning that is exactly. that is very important so exactly. a typical example is that of our gurukul system hmm. right so gurukul whatever you were learning you were learning so there was no school right yeah. so there was no demarcation of ki education has to be imparted in school and then you live your life it was hmm. not there education was go like it was throughout it, your it, life. It, it, it was so, actually right? so there's no it was, of oh, it was a different. lifelong process and it, it was considered as a process now the the other thing is it is not being considered as a process it is just it 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 has been considered as a medium to get you a good job or a good status in the society so that's that's the basic purpose that the education what i feel is serving right now exactly exactly so it it is it is not a journey it has become a destination exactly, exactly. <laughs> it should not be a destination the journey the importance of journey is very important hmm. yes hmm. so 
uh, how did how did this thought of starting my ways or i i would like to put it in a manner like how did this thought of even uh, starting something that was close to my ways because i believe a lot of things must have evolved during the idea idea and now what actually my ways is so how how was that initial idea born in your mind or like what what was when like you already told that you had those things about education system and you had been a victim of it so how how was that particular idea which was somewhere close to my ways born and how did you and your team or you individually got to a phase where my ways is right now how did that brainstorming of session and filtering of idea got into process got it got it, got it. yes uh, so so as i mentioned right so uh, there was some innate uh, i guess uh, calling uh, mm. towards education for me right mm. so uh, it was at the end of my first year as i mentioned right i have used all the summer and winter vacations really well so at the end of my first year in the summer vacation i joined a 21 day policy school okay where i was an organizer uh, volunteer in okay. the organizing team so i had not joined as a delegate because i was not interested in policy i was i was really a, a beginner right a yeah. newbie in that uh, i got enough exposure to different fields okay. and i was whatever problems the policy makers used to come they used to discuss i used to see that everything has a has one thing in common which is education Hmm. right hmm. somehow it is related uh, in all the all the fields that is a very basic fundamental uh, problem if it is solved a lot of other problems hmm. may be solved so th- there there was one event called idea hut okay right where what you what all the delegates used to do was they used to write any idea that they wish to work on and all the other delegates there were more than 180 people uh, who can connect with you if they relate to your idea and you can have a brainstorming and you can discuss so it was mainly for delegates but as i as a volunteer in the organizing team i also put up my chart and mm-hmm. i named it school edge that was at that very moment i named it school edge connecting schools and colleges mm-hmm. right so idea was basically that we are going to connect college people with the school people from different departments different uh, domains to mm-hmm. help them with their career decisions okay so connecting schools and colleges this was a piece of paper which was put on mm-hmm. uh, and that was the incident it was closed there i got a lot of stars by mm. a lot of people and uh, their comments i stored it in a in an envelope and uh, for later references now uh, it was may june in december i came across one uh, opportunity which was about social entrepreneurship okay there was a seven day program a residential program in a rural place in madhya pradesh mm-hmm. it's called itarsi itarsi mein there was yeah. some rural village where a uh, rural area where uh, this was a residential program so mm-hmm. us gaon mein jaakar we used to stay and we we had to stay for 7 days and learn about entrepreneurship okay. the very basics of entrepreneurship and uh, so that is where my first good exposure to entrepreneurship was so it's very contradictory by the way lot of entrepreneurs were visiting id delhi for mm-hmm. conferences lot of workshops were having were happening but i used to go there i used to listen but what attracted me the most was that place and those fundamentals of what exactly is an entrepreneur mm-hmm. right uh, after which uh, like around i was in china for my research internship and i got enough time to self introspect this was 6 months again down the line Okay. and that is where i decided that hey what we are going to do with school edge what am i going to do with skill edge i got enough time to think upon this question mm. is it worth considering is it good mm. to take it forward and that was when i came back i was a part of a, like i was heading one very important uh, club at iit delhi uh, like it was it was pan india so i was heading it and mm. uh at that moment i decided to step down from that responsibility and focus on what i'm going to do with college because i was decided that this third year i'm going to focus on on the yeah. so i decided to close all the other chapters in my life and focus on this 
and six months eight months of research primary secondary directly talking to the students and all of those we figured out i got a couple of people with me who were interested in exploring the problem statement uh talking to the customers uh, figuring out the entire market space hmm. we figured out that it is good to start with college students first because the problem is even there and they had that power of making decision in schools people might not have that power of making that decision hmm. right and it's not a uh, service of urgency like right? there's no need of urgency there while in colleges the need of urgency is there they wish to actually uh, sort out their lives and they are quite serious about it mm-hmm. uh specifically in the last third and fourth year that was when like we started we built a basic product on how we can help uh, whatever on the basis of our research how we can help we built a very basic technology product uh, mm-hmm. a very basic pilot right a prototype and we collaborated with seven eight good colleges uh, uh, from across india and we had their students around 5000 of their students use the prototype and we received a good enough traction that is during this process uh, because of the environment out there in iit delhi i uh, came across how technology can specifically help accelerate the solution of this problem so specifically how we can use artificial intelligence this was constantly brainstorming with different people in different areas so i have met professors in machine learning who had no idea of careers at all initially or psychology or uh, just to see what is their view mm. right at the same time meeting lot of investors to see what is their view with respect to business that was all what i was doing in iit right meanwhile maybe sometimes attending the classes also so that that was what the journey was about and uh, with this the pilot was there and i had the idea of how technology can be used to scale this particular solution up and okay. i pitched it to iit delhi while i was just graduating and they provided me with some grant which uh, comes from government uh, to build the product and we successfully built the product in 8 months that was what the duration of the program was and at the end of this we launched the product in march so uh, after which there was a good roller coaster ride and there is going it is going to continue so it's been around one year now and it is going to continue this way and uh, then the operational hassles and all of those come into picture the product was developed and uh, uh, yes initially when we launched the product also <laughs> there were a lot of bugs because we launched it pre mature so yeah. when we were about to launch the product 80% 90% of the product was completed and we we decided to launch it in phase 1 and phase 2 okay now uh, ideal in ideal situation in the regular uh, scenario phase 1 was supposed to launch and then phase 2 we were supposed to launch but because of covid we we came across the situation that the demand of phase 2 was more than the phase 1 okay and phase 2 was not made at all and phase 1 there was no uh, option of launching it at that moment because the students are quite confused at that moment Hmm. right so uh, they are not sure what is going to happen colleges were also not sure and so we decided to work on phase 2 okay that was when we had to like uh, skew all the timelines we have to cut short all the timelines and we have to launch the phase 2 very very soon hmm. so which was otherwise decided for 2 months we decided to launch it in 20 days and hence it was premature so we launched it we got the users and then we decided to work on the product and improve the quality and it took around 4 5 months to reach out to the right product on phase 1 and phase 2 and finally get on the timelines correct yeah. so that has been the journey so far uh, right. yeah and now the product is well suited people are using it and uh, now we are thinking on more innovation how how yeah. we can uh, create more value people are now asking for the like they are engaging with the product and that's that's good yeah mm-hmm. great so uh, now i was i was uh, coming to that point which you uh, said in the latter part that obviously there there will be innovations and new implementations will be done over the time and product will be developed over the period new things will be coming in some things would go out so seeing the current seeing your current efforts seeing the current product that is being in the people 
uh, are you satisfied with with the kind of product that you have put out when in keeping in mind the problem that you were trying to solve and also keeping in mind the the phase that you have like the time that you have spent building it so are you satisfied with the thing that is currently out and something something which you thought of but hasn't been there in the product maybe which could have solved the problem in a better way so how do you how do you get to calm down yourself that okay it is just a start and things will come and go and these things will be implemented but okay it's fine for now so how do you get that thing in your mind if you do like if it's it's quite specific right. no, no, definitely so yes 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 uh, definitely so i think uh, with respect to satisfaction right so uh, if you uh, if you look at what is today hmm. right and what we can build hmm. right so so it's not even 10% okay right so i want to say uh, so i'm satisfied with the current stage hmm. i am quite satisfied with the current stage but it me it does not mean that we are supposed to stop here hmm. 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 right so okay. satisfaction is there stagnancy is not there hmm. so stagnancy to abhi is stage pe aa bhi nahi sakta i guess uh, uh, we we have a lot to build and i am satisfied with the journey also i'm quite mm. satisfied with the kind of time that we have taken uh, i have learned a lot all this while right there are lot of things which did not work out well and uh, they're supposed to be that way so i'm i'm a believer of this that uh, so there's this thing uh, called like so 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 i i believe that we need to try early and fail fast mm mm-hmm. right so so we have to so the faster we fail the better we are Yeah. So uh, and that is one thing that we follow at my ways also in the team that we should not fear failure. All of us should fail, and we should fail fast. Mm. And at the same time, we should not fail on the same thing twice. Mm. Once we have failed on certain part, we should not uh, like repeat that mistake again. But yes, uh, out of hundred things, one thing is going to work, or five things are going to work. That's fine, right? But the amount of time that you are taking to experiment on those 100 things is something that should be taken care of and uh, we should not really take too much of time to do something which might ultimately fail so whenever we are doing something new anything anything with anything we start with this thing that we will try to make it a success we will definitely try to make it a success but we do not definitely turn a blind eye on that it cannot be a failure we know that it can be a failure also so what is the time when we are going to decide whether a certain thing is successful mm. or f- failure or it is currently not we do not have enough data to judge that whether yeah. it is successful or not so we have to be really aware of that and i guess with respect to this particular uh, w- keeping this particular thought in mind uh, there are lot of things that we have failed at and uh, there are lot of things that we have kept on hold intentionally uh, mm-hmm. believing that this is not the right time to do that exactly right so perhaps once we have a certain level then it will be a good time to bring in this particular part so we have we have done a lot we have done a lot not everything is currently out there in the market mm-hmm. so it will come out in phases and there are lot of things that we have tried and which we which uh, have failed badly so both yes so also like as an entrepreneur you have several challenges and it's considered to be one of the toughest thing to go for what what's what's the t- what's how what has been the toughest job for you as an entrepreneur like if you consider a chunk of jobs that an entrepreneur does so what has been the toughest part according to you that you have done and you have done it quite well according to you right so i think one thing that uh, most of the entrepreneurs miss out and uh, because i was told from my mentors and mm-hmm. also in my own journey of exploration i believe that it is very very important to have a good culture okay right so a culture which can flourish people 
and uh, people are most important more than anything else the people are the most important uh, asset that an entrepreneur has right so a uh, job of hr yeah for an entrepreneur right not i am not considering hiring i'm not mm-hmm. considering other parts but hr means human resource mm-hmm. right so your human resource management is the most difficult part and i think i had a personal interest in that area managing relations keeping the culture very strong uh, following certain aspects of the culture every new person should uh, like should be infused in that culture within two days of joining right uh, can we do that and also can the process of hiring be also so that people who are quite fit for that culture are coming in Mm-hmm. right because uh, one person can actually damage the environment a lot or the exactly. culture a lot so uh, i as an entrepreneur has focused a lot on people and uh, uh, what they are getting from my ways because mm-hmm. i believe that if the team member grows then only the team can grow yeah right so mm-hmm. i think that is that is an important part and that is where i try to spend a lot of my time in and uh, i i try my best to make it perfect right and uh, yes it is it is difficult and but i enjoy doing it so right. i'm more of a product person uh, more of how uh, people are liking the product customers are important mm. all of that and for for that like uh, you need to ensure your team is happy and if they are happy they'll make the customers happy <laughs> exactly. so that is that is what i believe exactly great uh now samir this one is the last one and I, we would end the conversation over this uh is there is there any aspiration you have as an entrepreneur as a leader or as an individual only that okay if if i achieve this thing or if i achieve a bit of this thing i would be happy with myself and i would be like i would be patting my back that you did a good job in your life or it it could have been like when you even started your company so it could have been that period also so please if you have something that you have so uh, for me for me uh, i'll i'll divide the questions into two parts maybe answers yeah. into two parts or two parameters uh, for me uh, what is very important is the impact that what we are working on hmm. what impact it is making in the life of the people hmm. right for me impact is more important uh, is it making a difference is it making the lives of the people easy uh, easier is what is most important for me right so mm-hmm. even on linkedin i'm quite active and people reach out uh, to me on linkedin and they tell about oh, how exactly uh, my ways is helping them and that is what gives me good satisfaction yeah right this is about my parameters of success mm-hmm. right or if I, if i have achieved something is when people say that hey you have made this and i like this mm-hmm. right and yes it is useful for me at the same time i also appreciate criticism right so both of these are the two sides of the coin and i take it very unbiased very equally so impact is what is very very important for us at myways and also individually for me and if you talk about my aspirations or what exactly i wish to do right as an entrepreneur i i think one thing that i wish to achieve in my life so so i am quite uh, i am a people's person okay right so i love to understand people i mm-hmm. love to understand the way they think as i told right the yeah. human resource management and all of that so uh, i have pursued psychology also during my uh, time in college as a personal persuasion so mm-hmm. and with this if i combine technology so an aspiration that i have Uh, and i at the right time i might try to explore it is that i wish to give emotions to robots okay right so i want to make robots emotional hmm so 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 that is something that or maybe machines right if not robots can we make can we give emotions to robots and can they be emotional in certain ways right not really uh, replicating human beings uh because i believe that is going to be really important when we are going to lose connections with each other right those emotions are going to 
uh, with with coming up of artificial intelligence and these devices digital uh, industry 4.0 that is one part where people are going to miss right and i believe that uh, the next phase maybe uh, so so next phase in the human kind will be to explore self right hmm. so when everything is known outside the only thing which is left is to explore the inner self hmm. and uh, if we can explore the inner self where emotions is just one layer right so there are other layers also but the the topmost layer i see in terms of depth the topmost layer that one can explore is emotions and uh, when you'll be interacting with robots uh, if we can actually have robots also have emotions right and we can talk out to them so i i wish to explore that area maybe 5 10 years down the line whenever the right time would be there but i'm doing my work on the personal self on that front <laughs> interesting yes. interesting well that was great samak and i hope you enjoyed this conversation and definitely you have some very unique uh, questions <laughs> yet put me into into introspect uh, introspection good introspection yes <laughs> thanks a lot thanks a lot man for joining and it was great to have you on the show and all the good all the good wishes for my ways got in and we hope to do more further collaborations sure sure nice nice talking to you gushagr thank you for inviting me it was my pleasure thank you thanks a lot thanks a lot sanjay okay okay